everyone, my name's Annette. Welcome to Cotta Verde. Today is a super exciting day. We've been waiting for this day for so long. Today we're putting up the large Gothic arch or pergola um, that we've got for this entrance here um, into our garden. And I can't tell you how exciting it is because we have been planning for it for a while and I've even got the roses, if you've seen my previous video, I've even bought the roses that are going to go, I'm going to train over the arch. So what we're going to do today is put the arch up, we'll show you the process that we go through and, and then I'll show you the finished result afterwards. The reason we're putting the arch here is because I really want like an entrance from the patio into the garden. At the moment the garden is just this big expanse and in fact we are going to keep um, some lawn area so I just want there to be sort of this step that you can walk through, ooh step that you can walk through to get into the garden and it sort of would just lead you through. I feel like if we've got some height here at the end of our patio that um, that's really going to sort of um, put like a full stop if you if you see what I mean and but also it will draw you through because you'll be able to see a view through the arch because it really is quite wide so this arch um, we've bought from a company called AgriFrames um, they're here in the UK this is not an advert and it's not sponsored it's not an affiliate link or anything like that and we haven't actually used their products before but I believe that it's good quality and it will stand the test of time um, it is three and a half meters, 3.6 meters wide, three and a half meters tall, and 61 centimeters deep. But actually what I've done is I've bought two identical arches and I'm going to kind of put them side by side. So they're going to span the width of where we had the dahlias last year, that bed that we had last year. And so I'm hoping that they're going to be, um, two together will sort of create like a, a deeper archway to walk through. Anyway, you'll see what I mean as we put it up and when you see the finished result, but I'm basically gonna put two arches side by side. I'm gonna show you the instructions because they're really odd. The instructions have been printed and they're kind of in gobbledygook, like all the spaces are missing between the words, which is really random and bizarre that someone sent that out. Um, I'm hoping that it's not a reflection on the quality of the frames that we've received. Um, <laughs> really hope. I mean, they seem pretty sturdy and strong. Um, anyway, I've managed to find the instructions online. So actually it doesn't matter too much. And you know, if we can't understand what we're doing and figure out, you know, where the spaces are supposed to be in the words, then we will just um, look online. So yesterday, what we did is we unpacked everything. It came in absolutely um, loads of protective packaging and actually um, whilst there's a lot of plastic involved, which is very disappointing because I'm, you know, very environmentally conscious. Um, actually it was it protected everything quite well also the plastic and tape was really hard to get off it took a good hour to get everything off these two arches having said that they're unpacked now and we found all the screws and bolts and stuff we need um, we need a hammer to put it up apparently they provided everything else we just need a hammer oh and some steps so it says it needs two people in order to be able to lift the arch onto the top of the uprights uh, so thank goodness i'm here with all my strength uh, to help richard with that bit so this is the view from outside our kitchen and this is where the table is here and beyond that this area that's our seating area with the eucalyptus hedge at the back there and this is the glazed corridor which looks directly out onto the garden which is quite wide and so what I'm planning to do is put the arch over here as an entrance at the top of these steps. So here we have the hammer in instructions and some very dead plants that haven't been cleared. And here we have the two arches. The curved bits are obviously the top and then these are the uprights. And these bars here are the bits that will hold everything stable. And there should be some finials somewhere. I'm guessing the finials are in these bags. So yes, here are the finials that are going to go on top. And I think we also need a spirit level just to make sure everything is completely upright. And again, so the archway is going to go from this bed over to, you can see we've started digging this and this bed will just continue on down the garden here. And then there'll be a pathway in between these two beds. 
but the archway is going to go over this space. Okay, so we now have the steps behind me and a spirit level and um, what we've decided we need is something that's three and a half meters long so that we can make sure that one side of, so not only are they upright, but we want to make sure that um, because the ground is not necessarily flat, we want to make sure that one side of the pergola is exactly level with the other side of the pergola um, so that we don't have like a skew if archway. Okay, so this is very much a figuring it out process. I will try and edit out the really dull bits, um, but uh, what we have to do first is we have to um, build the arch bit and put a spacer bar between the two arch. So there'll be two arch bits side by side and we have to put a spacer bar between them. And that's what we're going to try and figure out now. We're going to put the finials on the top so there's a, this little rubber ring that we had to put on top of the arch and it's supposed to stop the finial rattling and it was just all good we couldn't figure out whether it was supposed to go inside or outside of the hollow tube this is one of the finials here and this is like the anti-rattle rubber cap that we were having problems trying to figure out whether it went because it's quite tight fitting and we didn't know whether it went inside the pipe to stop it rattling or on the outside but this goes on the outside of the pipe but just don't push it down too far because the lip bit um, is what will stop it rattling. So now what we have to do is we have to carry the arch to where we're going to put it in the garden and we kind of have to make impressions with the ends of the arch into the ground so that we know where to hammer in the holes with the hole maker for the uprights. We've marked where we want the arch to go and now we're using um, what they're calling a hole maker which is a pipe and hammering it into the ground according to the instructions by 15 inches to make a hole so that we can slot the uprights into that. So we've run into a problem, there's obviously a rock right beneath where we want to put um, one of the poles for the uprights and so we're going to have to dig a big hole, it's really annoying. So it wasn't a stone or a rock after all, it was a massive cast iron pipe, probably left over from when this garden used to be a flower nursery. Um, and yeah, anyway that pipe looks like it's got a hole in it but it's a big cast iron pipe and we're going to have to move the pergola slightly forwards which is absolutely fine and the other pergola will just go the other side of the pipe so we're leaving the hole open at the moment so that we can be sure not to try and put it on top of the pipe again so we're going for a 30 inch spacing approximately on the spacer bars so the first one well, I lie because the first one's about 15 inches off the ground and then there'll be 30 inches between that one and the next spacer bar and about 30 inches between the top spacer bar and the first one that's on the curved part of the arch. So our garden has a gentle slope, very gentle slope, um, but um, what I'm trying to do is make sure that the archway, you know, when it's, when it's this way that it's not leaning, but also like the side view it needs to not slope as well. Um, it's quite hard to explain, but at the moment, one side of the archway is a bit lower than the other. So what we need to do is either hammer one of the holes deeper or fill one of the holes in a little bit. That's absolutely amazing!
So now that we've made the first arch, we're going to make the second arch, which is going further into the garden, but kind of right next to it. Um, and I'll show you where that goes when we've done it. Of course um, we're having some more problems with stones so we're going to have to dig the holes um, rather than hammering holes in so it's going to take a little bit longer. lost my breath I'm so excited this is definitely a really big day for the garden and I know it's it's a small thing but this is a dream come true and I've been waiting for this archway it's huge like it's really really big and I'm absolutely over the moon over the moon I'm over the moon quite emotional and it's kind of taken my breath away I think with the sun sort of at the level that it is at the winter, in the winter. I don't know, it just looks beautiful at the moment. Let me show you, I'm going to give you a guided tour. So this is the view from the table on our patio. You can just imagine it with roses growing up it, maybe some clematis, and it's just this wonderful entrance into the garden. up it's kind of this dark gray color these are the rubber seals that slide over the joins each of the little bars you use an allen key to screw them in so they're secure they don't move at all and then you hammer it into the ground and then when it's so high I'm going to need to get on a ladder to prune the roses I can't believe what we've managed to achieve today. We've got both pergolas up and if you knew anything about Richard and myself, we're not particularly handy with stuff like that. I mean, we're definitely getting better, but we've managed to get them both out without too many mishaps. You know, there were a few things. One of the little rubber washers that goes over, it's like a moisture seal that goes over the um, the joins. One of them has snapped into and I think probably in transit but I'm pretty sure that we can get another one if we just call them up and ask for it so we'll do that on Monday. Um, but other than putting a few things upside down and having to deal with some rocks and builders rubble actually we managed to get them both up and I am overjoyed. I cannot, I'm not exaggerating, I just can't tell you how much joy this is bringing me and I cannot wait to get the roses in which will probably be um, a video that comes up very shortly so if you want to see a bit more about planting the roses around the pergola and which roses I've chosen then do subscribe to my channel and you can follow along if you liked this video 
and you want to see more from my channel please do give it a thumbs up because it tells YouTube then to show my video to more people and that really helps me and I would really appreciate it anyway I hope you've enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time um, and um, I think they provide like the little what are those things called not ankle grinders <laughs> oh you know the tiny little right angled spanners oh I'll remember in a minute so thank goodness I'm here with all my strength. <laughs> you tell me amateurs because somebody, virtually no names, put that one in upside down. Even though I'd put the rubber end stops on. <laughs> now he's asking me why, why I didn't spot it. And we've literally just spent 15 minutes making sure everything's level. It's so annoying. <laughs> so tall it's gone off the top of the screen. Hang on a second. Ta-da! It's recording, isn't it?